and really hope that this works. Here's to trying new things. Yes, here's to trying new things. Okay, let's pull this up. Let's see if this works. Are you able to see my screen? Uh, right now, yes, I see it. Okay, perfect. All right, well, and I don't know how to do it any other way than to, for you to see like my dashboard and everything up there, but luckily it's organized, so won't be a problem. Okay, so how to live your dream life. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about creating intentional habits today that can uh, take you to another level of happiness. And this is gonna look dif different for every single person, so it's not a, a cure-all, but uh, it's definitely you know, something to strive toward. So, oh, I'm gonna go back to the top. Sorry about that, okay. Um, let's see here, one moment. Technical difficulties. Okay, first of all, I wanna thank Lisa for having me here. Um, she has me talk for the library often and I love it. Uh, this is our very first time doing it online and live. So that is something new for all of us. And it's very exciting coming to you from my living room right now, uh, which is pretty awesome. It's pretty cool that we can do that in this day and age. Um, and it, I titled this program, How to Live Your Dream Life. It's kind of, it's a bold statement and I, I wanted it to grab your attention because you know, a lot of people hear that and think that I must be living my dream life. And so I'm the authority on it. And that is not, that's absolutely not true. I have just been inching my way to my dream life by changing a few things in my life. So that's what I'm going to tell you about here. I've acquired a lot of knowledge on this subject, uh, but knowledge is nothing if you don't put that knowledge into you know, into practice. And the best way I can do that is to teach you all a little bit of what I've been learning um, because it's pretty cool. Okay, so let me skip to the second one. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? I don't know if you all have ever heard this, but um, it's something that I learned when I worked in Nashville in a uh, corporate environment. It was a fast paced environment and there was always, uh, a fire to be put out just everywhere you looked. And uh, I remember a coworker told me that, and I thought that was really helpful. Uh, she had to tell me that multiple times because it is, it can be daunting to see all the different things that you need to change. But if you can just focus on one thing, uh, you'll start to see results and you'll get, you'll feel more confident and that will, it's almost, if you think about it, like a snowball rolling down the hill, you'll, you'll gain momentum and be able to change even more things in your life. Um, so I also uh, spend a large portion of my life. I don't know how many of you tuning in know me, but um, I've moved from city to city, uh, job to job, looking for satisfaction, some type of happiness that, uh, that I realized was only within myself. Um, so I, I started reading every self-help book you could think of. I was listening to podcasts, watching documentaries, listening to lectures. I mean, pretty much all day, every day in my downtime, I was trying to develop my, my inner self a little bit more. Um, and basically, Excuse me. I'm gonna take a drink. All of the all of the greats that I've read and listened to, they agree that your happiness lies in your mindset and your beliefs and the stories that you tell yourself. Um, so I did a lot of reflecting and looking at my attitude and my feelings and my contribution to my relationships, and I realized there was a lot of things that I was doing. Um, consciously and subconsciously that didn't line up with my dream life. So I started to dismantle that. Um, and that's where this quote comes in handy because it's how do you eat an elephant when you when you look at your life and you realize that you're not really doing 
anything that brings you joy, um, you ha you kind of have to start a adding a little bit in at a time. And so that's kind of what I want to help with now is how to um, we have to break down what we're currently doing and then what we want to be doing so that we can bridge the gap between those things. And we're going to do that by making small measurable changes and being grateful for what we already have. So the objective today is I want to help you identify what you're doing that you don't like uh, and what you could be doing differently. Um, and then clarify how to get how to get you there. Um, what is it going to take? What are you going to need to change in order to get to that life that you really desire? And then actually we're going to simplify to get there instead of adding things. My my philosophy in life, if you've ever worked with me organizing, it's like just simplify. I heard someone say once um, that you need to edit ruthlessly. Edit ruthlessly and that is something that i have done in all aspects of my life um, i started out with organizing my physical space um, that's where my entire journey started i was kind of considered myself a minimalist um, and that word means something different for everyone so um, but for me it was i didn't want to have anything that i didn't think was beautiful or functional and that's kind of led me into um, my virtual space, my mental space, all of these things. It's um, we live in a state of overwhelm almost constantly. We're being bombarded with new things every day and it's it can be a little overwhelming. So my advice is simplify and we can I'll, I'll tell you how to do that a little bit later. Here. I love this quote by Henry Ford. Uh, you will see today that I love quotes. It's my favorite thing. Um, this is one of my favorites. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Um, like I said, all of the greats kind of agree that it is your mindset that creates your reality. It's um, most people who do very well in life are grateful for everything that they have. So when you show gratitude for all of the things that you do have, you end up getting more. Um, and we see evidence of this quote all of the time. Have you ever said, you know, just, just yesterday I was talking about how I'm not good with computers and things like that. And that's, that's absolutely not true. It's a thing that I did tell myself for a long time. And then I worked for a, a corporation where I had to, I had to learn how to use a computer and I was actually quite good at it. I just never gave it any time. Um, so if you say you can't do something, you're really just giving yourself an excuse not to try to do it anymore. So we all have uh, subconscious beliefs and storylines running behind the scenes. And we've been telling ourselves the same things for so long we start to believe that it's true. Um, some of the tools that we'll talk about today are things that have helped me in my journey. Um, there's endless tools to help you. And really it's about picking the thing that works the best for you. Okay, identify. This is, this is where I would like participation. If, if anybody's on the call, I would like participation in what would your dream life look like? Because I think we tend to pay attention to what's actually going on, our physical reality in the moment. And, you know, it doesn't feel good. It's not what I want it to be. So we don't spend any time thinking about how we might want it to look different. And so that's something that I would challenge you to do. It's a question I've asked many of my clients when we're working together, you know, what, what do you want? What is, what do you want your space to look like? What do you want your day to look like? What do you want your life to look like? And to be honest, most people don't know. And to be frank, I'm not, all, I'm not really sure what I want that to look like. I, I have a, a clearer picture every day because I'm actually striving to see that, but it is something that you have to work for. If, um, do you, if you have a daily routine, 
are you are you happy with your routine or do you even have a routine? That's a pretty important thing um, for success is to have a routine, um, at least a morning routine to get you started. Um, it'll it'll put you ahead of people who don't have a routine in place. Okay, so and also a thing to ask yourself is is that routine setting you up for success or is it setting you up for failure? You know, if you wake up every morning and eat uh, a waffle covered in syrup and but you're wanting to lose weight, that's not exactly in line with what you really want. So look at your habits and see if they're in line with what with who you really want to be. Once we identify what's keeping you from your happiness, then you can start to uh, slowly make changes to do something different every single day. You're kind of pivoting your course just a little bit at a time, and over time, that will be a big change. Okay, so habits change into character, which I really, I love this because we don't think about we don't think about our habits much because most of them are just, they're running behind the scenes. We don't really even give them much thought. And sometimes uh, we tend to forget that we need to self care. I think um, most, of, most of you all are probably women because women are interested in this type of thing. And I think that we tend to, uh, to neglect ourselves in order to serve others. Um, especially if you have children, if you have children and you are on this call, thank you. You are like a superhero. I don't know how you do it. I'm impressed with you all daily. Um, I can barely get myself together sometimes. So just like seeing you all do that is I'm, I'm impressed with you all. Um, so habits. Okay. My hab your habits come together to make you who you are. Um, and so I did not enjoy the routine that I was having uh, to do whenever I lived or whenever I was in the corporate world. I didn't like the monotony of waking up. It was the same whenever I was in school. I've always had a real problem with structure. So I have had to figure out what kind of structure works for me and what what type of person I want to become. And then I can figure and I kind of work backwards from there to figure out what I'm going to do every single day. Hey, Sarah, do you got a second for a question? Yes. All right. We got a question of what area of life should I focus on first? Okay. So this is interesting because not, not everyone would start at the same exact place. Um, I have a lot of the uh, professionals that I have read about and listened to, they say your health, your physical health, because if you're, if you are not physically healthy, you can't enjoy anything else in your life. And so uh, one of the main, one of the main goals would be your physical health. Um, I know that that is one of the harder areas for me personally. And I'm just now starting to, I wouldn't say just now, last year I did boot camp um, and that was pretty hard on my body, but it was, it taught me to be consistent and committed. Um, and then now I'm doing the whole 30. And uh, I think these are the things that would be good to do in the very beginning because it's going to benefit you all the way throughout. And if you're not fully healthy, you can't enjoy, you can't enjoy success anyway. So, um, and not for long anyway. So I would say physical health. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. I'm going to go on to the next slide. So clarify. Um, let's see. What we want to do here is discuss what we would do differently if we were going to change our path. Um, so let's start with your morning routine. Um, I watched a video of a sergeant from the army. He was talking about making your bed um, and how if you just do that one small thing in the morning, um, you feel like you can accomplish anything. And that 
I had listened to that a few years ago and started making my bed. And then I make my bed every morning without fail. Um, it's awesome to get into a bed that is made at night. I don't know if you all, I don't know how you all do your bed situation, but um, for a long time, I did not make that up. I would just crawl into the, the unmade bed and go to sleep. And I just didn't fall asleep as well. But now I sleep like a baby. So what's really cool is learning to take those habits. Like, so I've taken this well-formed habit that is making my bed and I've attached to that doing a 10 second plank. Um, because I've heard that getting your blood flowing in the morning will help you wake up. So I took a well-developed habit and attached a new habit onto it. Um, that's, I've read that that's the best way to get yourself to actually commit to those types of things by attaching the two. And so that's something really interesting. If there's something that you already do every single day, when you do decide to develop a new habit, just do it with that one or right after that, and you're, you're more likely to see success. And think about the person who you intend to become and what would that person do every morning? Um, would they sit quietly and prepare for the day? Um, would they run and get a coffee? Would they walk four miles? Whatever that might be, take that and, and do that. Um, but also we can start with goals at first. I want all of this could be, should be written down first. Um, action shouldn't really be taken until you have fully developed what it is that you want to do. Okay. Next, this is, this is literally something I say every single day. And if, if any of you all, uh, know me in person, like I say this all the time to get something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. Um, that is huge because. If you say, for example, if I say I'm not good at computers, um, I just won't, I'll just never know. But the fact that I did something that I've never done and I, I took a leap of faith and tried to learn, I was able to do that. Um, this is a good quote when you're trying to change your mindset about things. And if you, if you repeat this to yourself enough, it will become a part of your subconscious um, that just runs on auto. And so this is something that can get you to uh, the happier mindset, the, your dream life mindset. If what you're currently doing isn't in line with what you ultimately want to be doing, then either one or multiple things need to change. And those changes take commitment and time. Um, if you, okay, have, I don't know if you all have ever read uh, you are a bad ace. I can't say that on here, um, but it's Jen Sincero. Uh, she has a second book that you are a bad ace at making money. Um, and there's a quote from it I want to read to you. It's when you change who you're being, you're basically killing off your old identity, which completely freaks your subconscious self out. Change hurls you into the unknown and puts you at risk for all sorts of loss. And of course, all sorts of unthinkable awesomeness, which is why it brings your biggest fears to the surface. So basically we are, by changing those thought patterns, we are rewriting neural pathways in our brain. So if you've ever seen a brain and all those little divots on, on there, all those little, all those little indentions, those are thought patterns um, and you can rewrite those uh, with time and it, it will be painful. It will be difficult. Um, you will, you will try to, uh, you will try to get yourself to not do it every single day. And it's, you have to reframe your mind and, and know that you want to get something different and you want to get something better. And that does take a lot of willpower. Um, one, th this is, such a, a crazy thing, but I have, I read once that if you wanted to help with um, self-control and willpower to start using your non-dominant hand because it activates the other 
So mine is my left hand. So it activates my right hemisphere, which I am normally doing everything with my right hand. My right hand was exhausted from things. I've made myself ambidextrous. I mean, and this has taken years, years of practice, but now I can use my left hand for anything that I want to do. And it just took practice. You know, there were times where I didn't really think anything was going to happen from it, but now I can eat with it. I can almost write with it. Um, it's pretty incredible. And all that took was just constant, not constant, but continuous practice. And uh, I've seen a lot of benefits from that. So that's pretty cool. Um, one of the things that my mother has always said growing up is the only constant is change. Um, if you all know me in real life, you know that I've said that a trillion billion times. And so if we can learn to roll with the punches and we can change the things that we don't like, we can, it will empower you and it will empower everyone around you. And people may not notice right away whenever you make these changes. Sometimes it, it is subtle um, and, or they'll notice that you don't want to hem and haw about how bad things are right now, because you know that your words are powerful and you're going to speak into existence what you want to happen, not what, not what you see going on right now. Okay, this takes me to simplify. This is my favorite. Um, I'm telling you, simplifying works in every aspect of your life. If you are feeling overwhelmed, the only way to fix it is to simplify. And we live in a very strange time where we keep adding things and adding things and adding things. You're being bombarded with with Facebook ads, um, commercials, just constantly, there's a constant stream of things trying to take your attention. So you have to decide what you put your focus on. Um, you need to have small, tangible, measurable goals to, to get to progress. So I'll tell you all how I started with this. Um, I created a habit tracker. I think on the next one, I've got the tools, okay. This is where it gets good. This is exciting because these are these are the tools that I have used in just a little bit of everything uh, when I need it. Uh, the habit tracker is number one. I have a list of the days of the week, uh, Sunday through Saturday, and every day I've given myself the things that I want to do every single day, like intermittent fasting, Whole30. Um, watering my plants um and then i've also every single day i've broken down a chore for myself and this is going to be totally different if you have you know this is going to be unique to your living situation some of you may have roommates some of you may have families um it's going to be different for everyone however this is going to be for your personal happiness and your personal development and i believe that everyone needs to schedule in self care. I will say that a million times because I, I have failed to do that in the past and it is one of the most important things you can do. Um, I even schedule myself to give myself a manicure and pedicure. If you saw my nails, I don't even wanna show you. If that's, when I say manicure, I mean like I, I trim my nails and I file them down sometimes, but it still makes me feel better. And so I put that in my habit tracker and I keep track of what I do. I put a check mark if I did it and an X if I didn't. And I see if I can move things around or if anything sticks out to me. There are tons of pre-made habit trackers online. Um, you can just download one and fill it out. I, I'll write mine in on a whiteboard every single week. So um, it has evolved in the beginning. It was chicken scratch and um, it, it probably would have made someone laugh, but for me, it's gotten a lot better uh, as I, the more I do it, the more I'm committed to it. Um, the Pomodoro technique, which is a timing system where you traditionally, it would be 25 minutes of work and then five minutes of a rest or a break. And then 25 minutes of work, five minutes of rest. You do that four times 
at a total of two hours, and then you take a 15 minute break. This is, this can be used if you're working at a traditional office, um, you have to al allow yourself, of course, for when, you know, an unsus unsuspecting meeting pops up or something like that. Um, but for the most part, it keeps you from sitting and staring at a computer screen for, you know, eight hours. It, it breaks up the monotony a lot and actually keeps you more focused. When you know you only have 25 minutes, you will get more done. That also goes really well or hand in hand with the time blocking. Um, I have been hearing about time blocking for years and I have resisted it just kicking and screaming because I do not like structure. And I found an article where they talked about time blocking as taking in two hour blocks throughout your day. So the first two hours of your day is self-care. The second two hours is your uh, light work. So like answering phone call or answering emails, text messages, things like that. And then you go into the deep work, which would be like research or, you know, meetings with clients. Um, it goes on like that. You can structure your day however you want, but it's such a loose structure. It doesn't feel like, Okay, from 1 to 115, I've got to do this. It's, it makes it, it feels very loose. And then the Pomodoro thing is just a little bit to keep you on track. Um, but none of this has to be rigid. Um, also meditation and prayer that has been huge for me. Uh, I know that this is about like living your dream life. And one thing that what I've always dreamed of is being just happy with where I am being content and something that's helped me with that is meditation. I meditate 15 minutes a day, regardless of what's going on, preferably in the morning, because once you get on a, once you get on a routine of that, it's hard to, it'll make you irritable <laughs> if you don't, um, because your brain is like a computer. And if you don't let it rest, it'll, it will die. And so I know that uh, I've heard a lot of people say that they aren't good at meditation and there's simply no such thing. However, there are uh, guided meditations you can do, or um, I took a class at the yoga loft where uh, I believe it was Alicia Watts. She, I think it was an hour and a half long uh, imagine my surprise. I had never really meditated and I absolutely loved it. Um, she was able to keep my focus on moving my thoughts away. Uh, just because it's not important right now. We were just trying to clear, just clear our minds and just feel at peace. And, um, that, because that's something we feel like we don't have time. We don't have time to do anything. And, um, I heard somewhere once that if you don't, if you feel like you don't have time to meditate then you need to meditate for longer. So, um, and meditation and prayer, they are synonymous to me. I believe a prayer. I feel like prayer is a little bit more. Um, I feel like that is gratitude and I do that also. I'll, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Um, the time management matrix, uh, Google that it is from the book, seven habits of highly effective people. It will help you understand the, what is necessary out of it will, it gives you questions to ask yourself when you're trying to decide if what you're doing is necessary or if you're just doing it because you feel like you have to. So is it urgent? Um, it's really helpful. And I would suggest looking that up. Um, and I put intermittent fasting on here because I don't know if uh, I don't know if anyone is interested in that, but I have gotten to that recently and it's been incredible. Um, it's delay. Don't deny uh, that thing that helps me every single day. And I've seen a reduction in inflammation. Um, I'm able to uh, I'm just able to control my eating for the first time ever. Uh, just by 
controlling the window. Like I, I, I give myself a certain window of time to eat during the day and, and I'm also eating whole 30. So these two things, if you're looking for not even just weight loss, but just general health, um, your, your brain or your stomach is like your second brain. I think that's how that works. And, um, you need to take care of the bacteria in your brain or in your stomach, um, to help you function properly. Um, this next one is that has changed my life completely. The brag and gratitude journal. Um, I took a business course. They suggested that every day we write down 10 things that we can brag about and 10 things that we are grateful for. And I have done that every single day for almost a year. And I didn't see tangible results from that until, until about 10 months in, I realized what it was doing for my life. Um, it, so when all of the Corona thing stuff happened, uh, when it just happened, I, it knocked me off my, my kilter. I didn't know, I didn't know if I was coming or going. And I was, I didn't fill out my brag and gratitude journal for five days. And I was talking to my friend about it. They suggested, you know, isn't that kind of like your prayer? Maybe you should do that again. And so I went back and did that day. I wrote down 10 things I could brag about and 10 things I was grateful for. And by the end of that list, I was so excited and so happy that I went back and did the, the five days prior to that. And the only reason I was able to recall those days is because of my practice of recalling my days for the last 10 months. So I, when I try to think of something I can brag about, I go back and I think, okay, I woke up this morning. Was there anything special about that? Sometimes I say I slept in and that's, that's a brag. Sometimes I'll say I woke up at six o'clock. That's a brag. Sometimes I'll say I woke up on my first alarm. You know, these no one can judge you for the things that you feel like you can brag about and um, bragging on yourself feels good and it makes you feel accomplished. Um, sometimes I have way more than 10 to brag about and that's pretty exciting. Sometimes I'm reaching, <laughs> but uh, I write something down no matter what. Um, and then gratitude. I try to just make sure I don't uh, I'm not thankful for the same thing. Like every day I try to do something different. I mean, sometimes it'll say, you know, I'm grateful for koala bears. You know, I, I just, whatever I can think of, um, I write that down. Yoga is awesome. And uh, I wish somebody, somebody out there would challenge me to do yoga every day for like the next 30 days. Cause I'd probably do it if someone challenged me. Uh, that's been a hard one for me to add in, um, but it is so beneficial. Uh, I, I did a couple of yoga with Adrian for 30 day courses. And I mean, the, it changed my mood. It changed my body. It changed everything. So I would definitely suggest that, um, minimalism, um, and, or whatever that means to you. It goes back to the edit ruthlessly. Um, when in doubt, like when I start to feel unsettled in my house, I will go through and get rid of things that I don't want. And I do it, uh, kind of like the KonMari method where I'll do, if I'm, if I'm going to do my clothes, I look at all of my clothes and, um, I've been reducing, I've been reducing for probably over 10 years now. And uh something that i like i always tell people is that it's never over um not to scare you but it's just there's a constant influx of stuff we live in the age of abundance in the united states and there's too much there's too much too much too much and we have to control how much comes in um this has been very difficult with me uh, especially with family or, you know, buying gifts. It's, it's really hard because I, I don't want stuff. And, uh, 
it's been a different transition, but that's something to look into. If, if you feel overwhelmed, having less stuff around you will absolutely make you feel better. Um, I can guarantee that. So does anyone have any questions? As of right now, Sarah, it doesn't look like anybody has posted any, but if they do, I will let you know. Cool. Thanks. Okay. You're welcome. I'm going to go to the next slide here. I have a challenge for everyone. Um, so choose something from the list below and implement it for one week. Just one of these things. This first one on here, the clean, clean your dishes and your sink every night before bed. That has the capacity to absolutely change, to be a game changer for you. Because I, most people don't like doing dishes. I'm one of those people. Um, it's very difficult for me to do. So that is something that I have been practicing. And also a uh, barkeeper's friend, I don't know if you all know about barkeeper's friend, but it's incredible and it will make any sink shine. It's incredible. Um, so maybe try that or write out a chore chart for yourself. If you have, um, other people living with you, if you have family, um, include them in it, uh, maybe give them some incentive to, uh, participate, maybe give them some allowance. Um, also I say, dedicate the first hour of your day to self-care. If an hour feels like it's too much. Uh, give yourself 15 minutes. Just give yourself some time. If you are a mother or a caregiver or anything of that nature and you are not giving yourself, if you're not taking care of your own self, you, you will have nothing to give. Um, if you take care of yourself, everyone around you will benefit. Um, so I really, I'm just going to, I'm a huge proponent of self-care. Uh, I would also, the brag and gratitude journal, it was the easiest thing that I could consistently do every day. And I think it is incredible. I talk about it all the time. Um, I look forward to doing it every day and I do not miss. If I'm going to be out of town, I take it with me and I do it then too. Um, also send one letter, one snail mail letter of appreciation today. I like the idea of that. We're all stuck here or stuck inside. Um, send somebody a letter and tell them how much you love them or how, what an impact they made on your life. And um, that will make you feel good. And that will, you know, that will spawn them doing that for someone else. You will create a chain of positive reactions. So books. I have sent this list to Lisa and she said that all of these are available through the library. Um, I'm going to go through them really quickly. Um, the power of concentration. Uh, this is a pseudonym, the Theron Q. Dumont. That's not his real name. I can't remember what it is, but this book, my mom laughs at me because I said, I've, I've listened to it three times all the way through. It's very, it's, it's kind of a lot to take in, um, but he offers, um, I've listened to it on LibriVox too, which is, uh, uh, if there's books in the public domain, they're free on there if, uh, if people read them. So um, that's something to look into, but uh, the, the book is very, it's rich with information, but he gives you, uh, exercises you can try to practice your concentration. And one of those is to pick up a book, read a page, shut the book, and then try and recall what you just read. Um, and you see such immediate results with that, that you'll be, you will be more inclined to, um, to do that more often. You'll, and you'll start to see the benefits of that because you'll, You'll be able to remember what you read and um, really all of this goes back to focus and um, so knowing what you want, what it's going to take to get there and how you can focus your efforts to getting there. Um, the four agreements is 
readable. It's a very short read. Um, I, I think I read that in one day uh, and I, I can't remember all of the, I was about to look that up, but then I realized you all can see that too. <laughs> um, but I can't remember what the four agreements are. Someone can uh, help me if they know, but it's be impeccable with your word. Um, and I should have looked that up. Anyone? Okay. Um, I wish I could remember them, but I'm on, I'm putting myself on the spot. So, um, next is the power of habit. Uh, this outlines why habits are so important and how to rewrite, uh, those neuro pathways in your brain. That's what this talks a lot about habits and how to change them. Um, as, as a man thinketh is a very, very small book. Um, and it's about how your thoughts create your reality. And it's a very, it's a, it was written in 1903 by James Allen. It's a pretty incredible book. Um, Paddle Your Own Canoe. I don't know if you all know who Nick Offerman is. Uh, it is an inspirational book. He is Ron Swanson on Parks and Recreation. Um, I love his books. And if you download his audiobooks, he reads them to you. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then You Are a Bad Ace by Jen Sincero. I found that book in a free bin in, uh, at Half Price Books in Bowling Green. And I read it and it absolutely changed my life. So I've been passing that thing on. And uh, I hope you all read that because it is great. She's got a couple of uh, sequels, if you will, to that, and they're all just golden. Um, next, are very hey, Sarah. Awesome. yes, somebody actually chimed in and gave you the four agreements. Thank you. Tell me. All right. So, don't take anything personally. Yes. No, I have don't done that. <laughs> don't assume. Always do your best. Be impeccable with your words. So you got that one. Yeah. Okay. So don't assume. Don't take things personally. What was that other one? What was that? Always do your best. Always do your best. There you go. I love it. I think I love it. Um, that book explains that we only believe what we believe because we were told by the same people over and over and over growing up what to believe and it's it's not bad it's just how our perceptions have developed and the four agreements are very simple simple ways to enhance your life and the people around you um don't assume is like, I need to get that tattooed on my forehead or something. Um, don't assume, because you don't know. You don't know. Um, and that is a hard thing to understand and to realize, but it's taken me a while and I'm, I'm getting there. But I think life is just like, it's like a spiral and you just keep coming back to things and learning them again and understanding them more fully. It ebbs and flows. Um, Netflix. I don't personally, I try not to watch TV because I can just get sucked in. So I haven't had an actual TV in years, but I do watch the occasional documentary. I try to make them documentaries. Um, yoga, the architecture of peace. That is something that I've just watched over and over and over again. It, it brings me peace and calm and I think you might like it. Um, minimalism, that is, uh, Josh and I can't remember his name. He started with a podcast and that's when I very first began, uh, my minimalism journey. They were talking about, um, doing packing parties, for example, where you, uh, have a bunch of, you go through your house and you find all the things that you don't really need right now, but you don't really want to get rid of and you invite your friends over and you pack it all up and you know you have drinks or whatever you want to do and you you pack everything up and then you wait uh 
for about three months and then unpack it. See if you had to get into those boxes and then you unpack it and see if you need any of it. And if you don't, you just donate it. And so I thought that was a pretty cool. I really liked what they were doing. They're a little bit on the extreme side of minimalism, but it's a spectrum and, you know, as everything is. Um, Tony Robbins, he is awesome. And you all raise your hand if you love Tony Robbins. Okay. He is, um, he's a motivational speaker. And this documentary, you'll learn a lot more about him and how he got to where he is. Um, he's incredible. And I just recommend that highly. Brene Brown is a queen. She's amazing. The Call to Courage is a documentary that I've watched a million times. I've quoted it. Um, she's got a really interesting, that's when I talk about uh, the story you tell yourself that came from her. You know, she talks about a day on the lake with her husband where they had a misunderstanding. He was thinking something totally different from her almost the entire day. Oh, also that's not supposed to say Gmail at the end. That's supposed to say heal underneath there. I just noticed that. Um, but the call, oh, okay. I'm going to go back to my story about the lake. They had a misunderstanding and her husband finally said to her, what is the story you're telling yourself? And that is something that I have given permission to the people closest and closest to me in my life. I have asked them that if they see me saying something, it doesn't seem like something I would say. They get to ask me, what's the story you're telling yourself? And let me just say that in the beginning, uh, you could, you'll probably react poorly to that if you're anything like me. <laughs> it's, it's a hard transition to be okay with someone calling you on, on something you don't want to be called on. But it's very helpful because if you can figure out the story you are telling yourself, it usually doesn't match up with the actual, what's actually going on. And usually the other person is telling themselves a story that is also not true. You can get to the truth a lot quicker if you ask yourself these kind of questions. And the next one is called heal, not heal Gmail. Um, bless me. I did mess up on the very second to last slide, but um, all of these are really helpful in just generally feeling better. But the takeaway that I want you to have from this is that it's going to be small changes. So just take a look at what you're doing right now and what's not working for you um, and extract those things that aren't working and then add in little things, maybe once a week. Um, don't overwhelm yourself. Don't try to change your entire life. And I'm talking to myself too, because a lot of the time I'll just say, oh, I'm just going to change all of these things. And then you just end up back right where you were. So it's not about, boom, you have your dream life. It's like, what steps can I take today to get me closer to where I want to be? And uh, the very first thing you got to do is figure out where that is. So where do you want to be? Think about that. Write about that, journal about that if you if that's something that you do. Um, journaling is cathartic. So I'd say just write things down and edit ruthlessly. That's what I'll leave you with there. Edit ruthlessly. I think that's it for me. Oh, thank you. Sarah, while we'll get while we're giving people on Facebook maybe a second to come up with their questions, um, I wanted to ask you. You gave us a lot of great tools and information, but what do you do when you get discouraged? Do you just go right back at it, or is there a process you go through to get right back on track? Normally, what I do is meditate. If I find myself overwhelmed with all the different options or all the things that I have to do, I will set, I have a, an app that's called Insight Timer. And I just set my alarm for 15 minutes and I literally just sit in silence. And uh, something that Alicia Watts taught in the class is to picture 
a, your thought floating down the river, just like you recognize it, you acknowledge it, and then you can let it go. And that is not easy in the beginning. Um, it is a practice, just like everything's a practice. It takes time. And so I would say be gentle with yourself also, because we are all going through we're all going through our own personal struggles every every single person and no one can look at you and know what you're going through but if you just just give yourself some grace and um yeah i think that's it thank you um one more question for you uh, you talk about setting your goals and working towards them, but how often should you reevaluate those goals and see, like, maybe I've changed and my goal has changed? Okay. It depends on what type of goal. I, I have short-term and long-term goals. Um, I think for measurable, tangible goals, just reset them every week. Um, but, I mean, this is going to be depends on who you are and what you want and how far you are from where you want to be. Um, but I would say a good place to start is every week. Every, so what I do is on Sunday, I rewrite my habit tracker, um, reevaluate my goals. I have long-term goals that I, I probably touch on those once a, once a quarter or something like that. Um, they're just kind of long-term goals and they, they pretty much stay the same. I'm just trying to make sure I meet these short-term goals that will take me closer to the long-term goals. Thank you, ma'am. I got one more for you because this is kind of my life. Um, what if your schedule isn't the same every day? What if you have a different, you know, start and end and things you do on a daily basis? How do you cope with that? Do you write it into your goals or is there another trick? Well, it's about figuring out the, the time management matrix would be helpful on this. Um, try extracting things that aren't necessary. We put a lot of stress on things that aren't necessarily that don't have to be done one of my favorite quotes is uh nature does not hurry yet everything is accomplished uh that's lao tzu and i think that um what that means to me is that i, I can i can relax a little bit on some of the things you know i i'll be like oh i have to paint the window out front and I have to do I have to do all of these things I have all of these things that I have to do but it's do you have to do them so take out the things that you don't have to do and start to replace them with things that make you feel good so um I don't know how much how much time would you say you spend on self-care a day uh, me, I try to give myself an hour. My self care um, includes sitting and coloring and listening to an audiobook, and that is when I am at my most peaceful. <laughs> lovely, oh, it really is. I love being read too. <laughs> me too. I do. I love that. So I'd say, uh, do you do that in the morning or at night, or is there a specific time you do it in the evening after I put my son to bed? Because my husband works nights, so that's my me time. Do you, um, are you the first one up in the house or how does, how does, what do mornings look like for you? Uh, my husband gets home at 5 a.m. and me and my son wake up around 8, so. Okay. Have you ever considered waking up maybe 30 minutes before him and doing something for yourself then? I think that, I think that would totally just change your life. I wake up 30 minutes early before he gets home. 30 minutes early before your son gets oh, up. See. Gotcha. I actually usually do wake up before him because he's already into sleeping in at six years old. So. <laughs> so what I've done is I've taken a list. I have a list of 20 things that make me feel happy no matter what. Like one of the things on the list is take a shower. Like if I'm not feeling great and I take a shower, I feel awesome. I don't know if that works for you, but like I, so I have a list of those 20 things. And if I have some free time to fill, I go to that list and, and pick one of those things. So maybe you could start with that. 
20. Well, that's a good idea. I, thought, I never thought about 10 that. Things. Yeah, 10 things, 10 things that no matter what put you in a good mood and then wake up 30 minutes early every day and do one of those things. Yeah. And I'm and it's this, the, um, the meditation, it has like a weird connotation, you know, I, I feel like, but it is the only thing that calms it just calms my mind. Um, when you wake up for the first time in the morning, you don't have any resistance to your life. You have to, uh, Wayne Dyer talks about, you will wake up and try and remember all of the things that, that were bumming you out. You know, you have to like, oh yeah, I've got this. Oh yeah, I've got this. I've got this. So if you stop and, and silence your thoughts before you get to that, you're less likely to feel so overwhelmed by them when they come. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And I have realized that about me. I get up in the morning and I just kind of sit there and exist yes. before I start thinking of what I need to do, what the day is going to bring. Yeah. Look yes. up okay. that existence. I love it. <laughs> well, Sarah, I thank you so much for being with us tonight and taking time out of your your you know, night to share your insights and your experience with us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I really like this virtual stuff. It was neat, wasn't it? I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. I hope you have a great evening. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.